Instead of using a traditional table to display these order metrics for each segment, we can enhance it by creating ring donut charts to represent each value. And the key to getting these rings is to use multiple mark layers. On a new worksheet, I'll start by creating the basic structure of a pie chart. And I'm going to start by showing what these metrics look like since they're binary fields. For example, the on time field has values of 1 for on time orders and 0 for not on time. So this allows me to calculate percentages directly without segmenting the data. Whereas with a field like sales, I need to segment it by a field like category to show percentages for each group. So to get the percent of the on time orders, I can pull measure values into the marks. And we already have the sum of on time as a metric, which will represent the total portion of orders on time. So I'm also gonna type in the measure values, the count of on time minus the sum of on time. And this will give us the portion of orders that are not on time. Then I'll remove all the other measure values. I'll change the mark type to a pie and make the measure values determine the angle of the pie. And the measure names determine the color of the slices of the pie. So you can see the blue portion of the pie represents the orders on time, and the orange portion represents the orders not made on time. To get multiple marks on the same plane, I'll use latitude and longitude to create a spatial view. Then I'll create a calculated field called makepoint using makepoint of 0, 0. This creates a point at 0, 0, which I can use as a fixed position for all my marks. Then I'll drag the makepoint field into the marks. To add multiple mark layers, I'll drag the makepoint field into the view again and add it as another mark layer. And I'll keep repeating this for as many layers as I need. This is allowing me to stack multiple marks on the same coordinates. I did it four times in this example, one for the donut and three for the rings, but you can add even more layers. And we don't need the longitude and latitude anymore, so I'm gonna remove these. And since I'm adding three rings using the pie chart structure, I need to go to the ring marks and transform them into pie charts. I'll add measure values into the marks and then change the mark type to a pie. Then I'll make measure values determine the angle and pull in measure names so it can determine the color. And I'll do this really quickly for the third ring as well. Since the first mark is gonna be for the donut effect, I'm gonna change the mark type to a circle. Then I'll go through and increase the size of each pie chart, making each layer behind slightly larger than the one in front. And by using color within the marks, I can decrease the opacity of the pie charts to give it that ring-like effect. Then I'll use the legend to edit the colors. And since the count of on time minus the sum of on time represents the portion of orders that are not on time, I'll make this a gray color. For on time, I'll choose green to represent the portion of orders that were on time. And for the innermost circle, I'll go to the circle mark and I'll change the color to be white. To get the percentage of orders that were on time, I'll type into the marks the sum of on time divided by the count of on time. Then I'll change this to a label and format the number so that it's a percentage with no decimals. To format the text itself, I'll use label in the marks and center this horizontally and vertically. Then I'll edit the text and make this size 11 font and Tableau regular. Currently, this visual represents the on-time metric for all segments. To expand this to show the three order metrics for each segment, I'll create a three by three layout. And instead of a plain table with numbers, I'll turn each value into one of these ring donut charts. You can do this all within a single worksheet if all your metrics are in the same field, or you can pivot your data to consolidate the metrics into one field. But for simplicity, I'm just gonna use this worksheet for on time. So I'll start by pulling the segment field into the rows to break down the on time metric by each segment. You can see within the marks that it's currently colored only by measure names, but I also want the donut chart for each segment to have a different color. So I'm gonna bring the segment field into the mark and make it a color. And I'll do that for all of the ring marks. 
Then I'll edit the colors using the legend, and I'll pick colors for the on-time portion of the donut charts. Then I'll color the portion that's not on time a light gray. For formatting, I'll start by hiding the field label. Then I'll format the worksheet, and for segment, I'll change this to black, size 11, and Tableau regular. Then I'll remove the shading of the worksheet and the row banding. And for borders, I'll remove the row divider. On a dashboard, I'll add the worksheet with our first metric, on time. I'll hide the title of the worksheet and I'll set it to fill the entire view. Then I'll resize the worksheet so that the rings fit in this white vertical container. And since we already have the structure of a metric displayed in these ring donut charts by segment, we can build off of it for our other metrics. So I'm gonna start by changing the worksheet name to on time. Then I'll right click on the worksheet to duplicate it. And I'll call this one repeat customer. This field is also binary with one representing it is a repeat customer. So for this, all I need to do is find everywhere where there's the on time field and instead change it to repeat customer. And I'll do that for the actual percentage in the donut charts as well. We don't need the header again, so I'm going to remove it. Then I'll edit the colors using the legend and choose different colors for the repeat customer metric. Then I'll right click on this worksheet and duplicate it again for our third metric. Returns is also a binary field where one represents an item being returned, but this isn't a positive outcome. Since the on time and repeat customer metrics are positive, I want the returns metric to also be shown in a positive way. So I'm going to reframe the metric to show not return instead of returned. That way it provides a clearer comparison across the metrics. To do this, I'll repeat the same process of turning the metric and the measure values to the returns field. But this time I'll right click on the measure names and sort it in descending order. That way the colored portion representing the returns will appear last. I'll also edit the colors using the legend and make the return portion a light gray and the not return portion, which is the positive outcome, a color for each segment. This ensures that all the metrics are more intuitive with the higher numbers reflecting the better outcome. And I also need to edit the percentage by changing the metric to returns. And to get the inverse, which is the orders not returned, I'll adjust the calculation by adding one minus at the beginning. Then on a dashboard, I'll add our two other metric worksheets. I'll hide the title of the worksheet, resize it so it fits in its container, and set it to the entire view. And we don't need the legend, so I'm going to remove that. And then I'm going to play around with the positioning to get these aligned. And this is going to give us more of a table format. Then I'm going to add a text box to label each of these metrics, starting with the on time metric. I'll make this Tableau regular, size 11, and black font. That way it matches the format of our segment headers. And I'm also going to edit this real quick so I can center it. Then I'll copy and paste the first text box and I'll edit the text and label it repeat buyer. I'll repeat that process again and this last one will be for not returned. Using the layout tab, I'll edit the position so that they're all aligned. And now we have a more interesting way to view metrics than a table, making it easy to compare them across segments.